All right, so throughout the last couple lectures, we've talked about the history of the theory of evolution, the different lines of evidence used to support it, ways we can test for it, how we can see it occurring, and different examples of evolution. So to kind of collect all of that and put it together, we want to now talk about origin and then the history of life on Earth. Now, how life got started is a completely different question than how life evolves. You know, they go together, obviously. They connect. But what we can look at is, here's the evolution of a species, how it changes, how it evolves over time. What we're now trying to understand better is, what's the best explanation for how life started on Earth? How did it actually begin here on this planet? What is the best scientific explanation for the origin of life? What did life possibly look like? The first living organisms. And then from there, the evolutionary process takes place and leads to the diversity of life on Earth. And how do we know about this history? How do we, what evidence do we have to show us the history of how life has changed and evolved throughout the course of the Earth's existence? All right, so the big key here is we have to be able to test it scientifically. If you can't run an experiment on it, then we're not putting it into the scientific realm. All right, so if this is something you guys are interested, you're like, wow, basically we're talking about fossils and looking at the fossil record and all the information in that. If this is something of interest on the physical science side of a degree, we have a course called Historical Geology. So this is taught in the uh, geology side of our department. Generally, it's offered in spring, and it's a gen ed physical lab science course. So everybody needs a life science and a lab science, uh, life science and a physical science. So physical science is stuff like geology, geography, astronomy, physics, chemistry, etc. So this might be an interesting one. It definitely connects. It correlates and connects directly to evolution because it's looking at the geology of the Earth over the course of billions of years. So again, it might be of interest to some folks. You look at life from the beginning of time, how it changed, the different mass extinctions, etc. There's a lot of overlap between that course and what we're going to talk about in this next lecture. You just go into a lot more detail in historical geology. So, all right, so enough of the plug for that course. Let's take a look at how life possibly started on Earth. All right, so, so we have lots of different explanations, different possible thoughts and explanations. As I mentioned earlier, the key here is what can we test? I need to be able to design an experiment run the experiment, collect the results, analyze the results, draw conclusions, and either I support my hypothesis or I reject it. That's what we're going to talk about here. If we can't do that, then we don't put it under the realm of science. Now, it's not to say we can't have other explanations, but they're not scientific. They're explanations that are they're held in a different regard. So we want to make sure we distinguish between a scientific explanation and one that does not have the scientific backing to support it. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at Earth. Earth has been around for a long, long time. If we go back to that guy Cuvier, he felt the Earth was only about 6,000 years old. Scientifically, we can date the Earth to about 4.6 billion years old. Right. That's a lot older than what Cuvier thought. So was there time for evolution? Absolutely. There's definitely enough time for the evolutionary process to occur. Now, when did the earliest life show up? Based on scientific evidence, the earliest life on Earth showed up about three and a half billion years ago. So Earth the physical body of the Earth was around for a little over a billion years before we see any evidence of life showing up. Now, the earliest form of life 
was very, very, oh, very, very simple, very basic. It was single celled, primitive, basic, simple bacteria. That's what the earliest life that we have evidence of today looked like. So these are actually drawings of the, well, the, some of these are actual photographs of the fossils going back three and a half billion years ago. And then next to the photograph are drawings for clarity to show us what some of that earliest, simplest life looked like. Nothing real exciting, but it was alive. It had the basic features and properties necessary to say it is alive. All right, so now how did that get here? That is the great question we want to try to understand. How did it get here? What are the possible explanations for this and what can we test? All right, so here's one widely held by a lot of people being studied and researched. So life got here by a meteor or an asteroid. So if you go, what, huh? What, what do you mean? All right, life's on another planet. No, that's a separate question. How did it start there? We're concerned first about answering how did it start here? So life started on another planet and a piece of that planet broke off and came to earth in the form of a meteor or an asteroid. This is definitely testable. All right, so let's search the Earth for evidence of asteroids. That's an experiment that we can do to collect data. Or we could also search other planets for evidence of life. This is why we're sending probes out to other planets. We had the rover on Mars there searching for evidence of life. If we find life on another planet, it is very possible that that is how life got to Earth. So let's start with the first question. How did life start on Earth? Possibly it came from another planet. It carried on an asteroid or a meteor. This is a scientifically testable hypothesis. We find it on another planet. That evidence would support this hypothesis. Now, how did it start on that other planet? Great question. Completely different question. That's another hypothesis. How did it start on planet QRZ, whatever the planet is called? How did it start there? That's another hypothesis. We're first, our first priority hypothesis is how did it start here on Earth? Okay, so this, the key is this is a testable hypothesis. That's what I want you guys to remember is we can test it. If we can design the experiment and test it, we can either support or reject it. And that's what scientists are doing right now is they're gathering data, they're running experiments, and they're trying to decide, do we support or reject this hypothesis? That's one of them. The other main hypothesis, or actually the main hypothesis on how life got here, or how life originated first on Earth, is from inorganic elements. So the thought is, inorganic elements, basic carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, etc. These elements formed the earliest cell structures three and a half billion years ago. So when we look at the early earth, and let me get the little highlighter here, we look at the early earth and we look at the atmosphere and the environment, and we look at these different organic chemicals down here that were present. Can those things break apart and recombine? Sure, that's chemistry. That's, that's basic chemistry. We can do that in our laboratory. So as they combine, they change and they become more complex and increase in shape and form and structure and create these different molecular forms. 
Polymerization means small things are sticking together to form big things. So we see this happening. And then is it possible that that chemical process led to the basic cellular structures, things like a plasma membrane? Now, plasma membrane, we can create that in the laboratory with phospholipids. Put a bunch of them together, they aggregate together, they form that structure, put them in a water, aqueous environment, and now you get a cell membrane starting to form, a barrier, a bilayer starting to form. So we can do this in a laboratory pretty, pretty easily. Is it possible then from there we get organic structures forming? The little mitochondria, the ribosomes, the genetic material, etc., and that continued to build in complexity, eventually leading to these early, early cells here, these basic cellular structures that then over time started to go through speciation, diversify, some succeed, some die off, and eventually leading to this group of organisms that we call LUCA, last universal common ancestor, and from there it leads to the diversity we have on Earth today. So hypothesis being tested, trying to be understood, is it possible? Okay, so can we test for this? Well, let's jump back to 1953. Miller and Urey did that exact thing. Sometimes you'll see this just called the Miller experiment, but let's give Yuri credit. Okay, so Miller and Yuri tested the chemical origin of life, thinking, is it possible this is how life arose on Earth? So what they did, they gathered together methane, ammonium, hydrogen gas and water and they said okay this is what we think were these are the gases and the elements that appear to be present in early earth's atmosphere let's put them all into this globe simulating or mimicking the earth's environment in the atmosphere of the earth now notice there's no oxygen gas there's no o2 think about the pathway required to produce o2 that pathway is not present on Earth, so there's no oxygen as a oxygen gas O2 present in the early Earth's atmosphere. But we have these other gases and these other elements present. Now when Miller and Urey put them together in that globe and they introduced energy into it, they used electrodes for a spark, lightning strike, thermal vent movements, tectonic plates rubbing, volcanic eruptions. I mean, we see energy all the time in the Earth's atmosphere. When they introduced the energy with that spark, it broke the bonds holding the elements together. They cooled things down, and then as those things cooled down, the elements recombined, and they started to form the basic organic molecules. They started to form the basic building blocks and structures of things like carbohydrates, lipids, etc. So it's basically they took the Legos, busted them apart, and let the Legos recombine, and they got some of the basic organic molecules. They thought, well, is this possible? This is how this all started. Now that test has been repeated over and over and over, and it continues to support that is how the basic organic molecules formed on Earth. Now that one is the leading explanation for origin of life on Earth, within the scientific community. Now, where this happened, we don't know for sure, but pretty much consensus says it was in an aquatic environment. Some people think at the thermal vents in the ocean, others are thinking on the shores of the ocean, but aquatic environments. All life needs water. It would make sense that water is present when life started. And we see some of those basic, simple bacterial cells living in the ocean thermal vents right now. So what we'll take a look at in the next lecture is how this organic chemical evolution led to the basic protocells 
that we think gave rise to the earliest forms of life on Earth. 